you know, we have people here from all over the, all over the world, you know, different places in the world, and we all think differently about mental health, different cultures, we contextualize it in different ways, and then many of us struggle, whether we say it or not, whether we acknowledge it or not, whether we talk about it with other people or just keep it to ourselves. The point is, many of us struggle. We have these bodies and we're, our spirits are born into them. And then, you know, we're left here, as my wife says, without a roadmap. I mean, there's no operating instruction. You know, if you're thinking and you're alive, then you have a lot of questions. And the questions gives rise to more questions. And so our mental health is just as important as our physical health. And so when you think about all that physical ailments that we have, right, all of us, whether we, you know, we have a sore knee or we get a sore back or we have this or we have that, we have just as many as many mental ailments or psychological ailments. And so that's what we're going to talk about today a little bit. Okay, y'all? Hello, my name is Gun Hyung. I'm from South Korea. Um, my name's Tim. Well, that's my white name, but my real name is Ting Wei. Uh, oh, right. China, my bad. Ting Wei. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From China. Uh, my name's Brooke. I'm from a really small town, but it's close to Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. My name is Sai, and I'm from India. My name is Mohanad. I'm from Saudi Arabia. My name is Angel, and I'm from France. And you're the lone American, so. And you haven't been in, you've never been in therapy? Like, I'm not even going to ask. See, I wouldn't even ask these other folks because I know the answer is no. You've never been in therapy. I've been in therapy, by the way. I spent, like, th I would say I spent three years in therapy really trying to understand the operating instructions, really. I, I mean, I wouldn't be here. I couldn't be here. I couldn't do what I do. Um, and I wouldn't be who I am if I didn't spend all that time in, in therapy or in counseling, really talking with another person who was asking me good questions, right? Questions that I really couldn't ask myself because you can't ask yourself questions. I mean, that's kind of crazy. You need someone else to do that, right? In your culture, in talking about mental health, how open are people in talking about it? Um, and I don't mean like the media, I mean people. I would say very inclusive on the topic of, you know, having a mental health or mental illness. That's why, as you know, like we don't really kind of share like, oh, I'm going to the mental health therapy and things like that. So I, I feel like people are still very kind of shy to talk and share about those type of topics. Mm hmm so when you say people, so you're talking about Koreans, right? Koreans are shy. Yeah. Do you have a sense of what makes them shy? Like what is it that leads them to be reluctant? Um, I want to say it's, it's there's, there's a atmosphere of kind of people looking at you like, like those, those eyes when let's say someone is having a mental therapy and they will kind of look at you as if there's a, something wrong with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I guess we, our culture is still in the stage of considering mental therapy as a problem, not like, you know, just a regular thing that anyone can have. And, so. and whose problem is it? The person who's going to the therapy, like, mm -hmm. like oh, so you're, you're, well, I'm not going to the therapy, and you are, so I guess you, have something wrong with you in your mm -hmm. mental. So. so do you think Koreans would think it's strange or how strange would Koreans think it is that I'm standing in front of all these people, right? And on YouTube saying like, yeah, I was in therapy for three years, right? I'll, I'll say like more than half will be surprised by your kind of pride or like your my openness yeah your openness uh -huh, uh -huh. yeah here it's almost like a badge of like you you go to in some communities in the u.s right like you it's a badge of honor like you know to be in therapy ting ting way what do you well, how about you how about in in china well i was in therapy like 
a few months ago. But in China, people people don't really talk about it. Like, um, like if I talk to my mom about it, my mom just go, just it's it's not a real thing. Just go to sleep. You'll yeah. okay. be fine in the morning. Wait, so you, so you were in therapy and counseling here in at Penn State or in yeah, the yeah, state yeah, cup, yeah. Yeah? yeah? Okay, and you told your mom. Yeah. And your mom said. Mom said it's just go to sleep. It's not it's a real. It's not real. Thing. You don't yeah. need that. You wake up and you feel all normal again. I'm like, uh -huh. yeah, that's how I feel. Do you have to drink ginseng tea first or something or green tea or to feel normal again? Like, what do you mean? Like, know. what's she mean? <laughs> yeah, that's that's why I ask her. I'm like, um, it's it's it feels weird, you know. And you have no you have no energy. You have you just don't want to do anything. And were you were you really reluctant? How reluctant were you to tell your mom? Like, I mean, to my mom, I, I will tell her anything. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. not that reluctant. But to other people, I I wouldn't say anything. Probably. Except yeah. to the camera. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, but you wouldn't, if, like with your friends and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but my it, friends know. My friends know. Okay, but are just people who you like met at a gathering or a party, and, and you wouldn't say something because... Wait. Like what? if you... Wait, hang on. Your friends know that you were... In. My only friend know. Yeah, you have one friend. This yeah. guy's your only friend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, so my, that's my bestie right there. Dude, you, he needs another friend, man. You get, cause look at this guy. Like, he really needs another friend. Somebody yeah, help yeah. him out. All right. Wait, he knows. Do other friends know? Do your coaches know, by the way? My coach, well, uh, yeah, they, they, they know after I've been therapy for like two got months. You. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. That's cool. Hey, let me ask you a quick question. What did you learn about yourself? Absolutely nothing. Seriously? It, it's, it's, it's quite, like, the whole session is quite useless, honestly. Oh, my God. Sai, you're going to respond to no, that. No, 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 because cause I, I just stopped going. Yeah? Yeah, I, I, just, I just stopped going. Maybe that's why it was useless, bro. Look, it didn't make me feel any different. Every time, like, she is like, okay, uh, it's time. Like, when do you want to come, when do you want to come next week? I'm like... All right, hang on, man, hang on. Sai's gonna, Sai has something to say to you about that. Hey, Brooke, no, no, hang, hang on, we'll, yeah, no, go ahead, actually, Sai. Um, the thing with therapy is, if you're not gonna go for it more than like, like you, therapy is like a gradual process. You can just go twice and then be like, oh, it's not working. I. Uh, when I went for therapy, I'm a psychology major and I'm like a big mental health like, I, I believe in mental health and everything, and I went for the first two sessions, and I was like, this is not doing anything. But if you don't go for your third, fourth, and fifth, it's not going to do anything. And that's the, that's like, it's a process. It's like trust in the process kind of thing. And there are a lot of therapists because it actually works. It, so, it works. Just so let me ask you this. What, what have you learned about yourself? For me, I think it helped me focus more, like, um, in achieving my goals because uh -huh. I tend to, like, um, criticize myself a lot. And because I'm an international student, it's really hard to cope with, like, academics and everything. So um, I think therapy really helped in um, achieving my goals. And another thing is that it really... It's like a third eye. You get to see th things about yourself that you actually can see. It's like someone else is sitting on the other side trying to tell you, okay, this is what's wrong with you and this is what you're supposed to do, which people, you wouldn't go look at yourself and be like, oh, yeah, I suck at this. I need someone else to tell me that I actually suck at this so that I can work on it. Something that you, yeah. that you go. Yeah, okay, so listen, man. In an ideal world, FYI, a therapist isn't really telling you that you suck at something or here's really what's wrong with you. Like, you got to decide for you. you. They help you see it yourself. Yeah. Like, what, what you're working on, what you got to work on. Okay. But how about, do you have a response to that, bro? Yeah, I, I have, definitely have a response. Because I've been here for, I've been there for two, two months. Like, every yeah. week I'll go, like, two times. Yeah. And I don't think it really helped because I'm still tired. I'm st every day I'm still, like... Well, this is bullshit, and you know, like I don't want to do anything. 
And well, you know, hey, well, hang on though, yeah. right? Maybe there are things, different ways to approach different things we struggle with, right? Yeah, yeah. The thing that helped me was uh, was was a three day party. It was a Friday night party, and there's a Saturday night party, and there's a Sunday night party. And after that, and that's it. I, I'm good to go. Dude, is that true, bro? Dude, what, what happened at the party, man? <laughs> Dude, I'm not, hang on. Hang on, take, I retract that question I just asked you. Uh, what yeah, happened yeah. at the party? Don't tell us, all right? We don't want to know. <laughs> Nothing happened. Yeah, I'm, yes. sh I'm sure. Just That's exactly. friends. Yeah, okay. Hey, uh, Sai, let's stay with you for a second. In India, how do people talk about mental health? So I in mean, it, India's a big place. You're over, you know, 1.4 billion, billion people. So, yeah. like, speak, please speak on behalf of every one of them. All right. So, in India, mental health is non-existent. It, it just doesn't exist. I literally came to the other side of the world so I could study psychology because it's, it, it's a thing. It's, like, growing, but, like, it's a taboo. Like, if you go on Google and you just type mental health in India, it... In like block letters, it says mental health is a taboo still in India. It's like people don't talk about it. Um, I don't think people would even go to therapy. There are a lot of therapists and everything, but people don't really go to therapists. A lot of people go to like like psychiatric hospitals when like they have disease like schizophrenia or like um, ADHD or like biological disorders. But in India. It's non-existent. Like nobody talks about depression. De depression is not a thing. It's Got you're you. just sad. Work like just get up, do your work, and you'll be fine. So just keep going. So keep going. Like, yeah, it's like your mom would say. Yeah. I just yeah. I think that way, like China and India, because because they're more like they're very education focused, like yeah. China and India. So I think for parents, it's like, oh, it's nothing. Just keep going. But um, mostly for India, it's religion. Um, people in, it's very funny, but like um, in like the village areas and like people are really religious, mental health. So if I have like depression or if I have something and I'm like from a village where like from like the poor areas, mm -hmm. it means like there's a ghost inside me or like yeah. um, there's like a bad spirit inside yeah. you. Yeah, a That's lot what of, they believe. No, no, no. A lot of, lot, so a lot of folks will go down that route of, yeah. of spirits. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. That's not in the U.S., by the way. We don't do that. How, how about you, man? How, how do people around you talk about <laughs> mental health? and? I'd say it's something like in the United States that's, people are getting a lot more comfortable talking about, but still at the same time, like, it's not something that people are just, like, open about, like, to everyone. Uh, I think it's, like, something you have to be really comfortable with someone, like, extremely comfortable to talk about. And, I mean, as you're telling them, like, oh, I'm going to therapy, they'll probably say, like, that's really good for you, like, I'm happy for you. Mm -hmm. But it's not something that everyone necessarily just, like, shares about themselves. Like, but, but I think if you people want to be, like, perfect. But yeah, yeah. Okay, but if you talk, so if you talk to your American friends, mm -hmm. right, and said like, hey, I think I'm going to start therapy up, up here, you know, Penn State, whatever. They probably would be like, that's, like, that's probably a good idea, like, good for you, like, I don't know. Uh -huh. they, they wouldn't think of it as, like, a bad thing. they definitely say, like, it would be, like, a good thing if I'm struggling to uh -huh, do you. for myself. Uh-huh. And, and if you weren't struggling, you just wanted to go to just better understand yourself? Yeah, I mean, I think... It's not always something like people necessarily, I don't know how to word it. I'm not sure that anyone would really just say like here, like they would just necessarily even like at a college age, like just sign themselves up if they weren't struggling. I think it takes like a lot of people to have someone to tell them like maybe you should do this sometimes for people to yeah. go get therapy for themselves. Yeah. But I think it's something people are becoming a lot more comfortable with, especially because a lot of like older people in the country, like they would say like, oh, it's nothing. You know what I mean? Like kind of that old school value, but like. How about you, man? How's, how is this talked about in your, let me just go with your family. How's mental health talked about in your family? Um, it's low key a joke. Like, I think my sister brought it up to my mom once and she like laughed it off and said like, you're too young to be 
thinking about what's going on in your mind or like you don't really know what's going on in your mind. And then like... Wait, how old was your sister at that point? Maybe about? 14-ish. Uh-huh. Ish, you know? And then like I think one time I said a friend at school is dealing with it and she said like, oh, she's not in tune with, you know, God. You know, it just went back to religion. Um... I never really bring that up around my mom or my dad, really. And, like, any time I do, it's, it's kind of like a joke. Oh, you know, it's the American way. American kids are doing this, this, and that. So just, like, stay away from them. So they, they would chalk it up to be, like, you're here in the U.S., and so they chalk it up to the idea that you're being Americanized. Yeah, and, and I'm following, you know, the American way. You know, if you have a problem, you chalk it up to a mental illness and... Like, that's the way you can get out of doing something else. So they're trying to, like, anytime I say it, they're like, oh, you're just trying to get out of doing this, that, or this. So, mm. mm-hmm, mm-hmm. huh. Have you ever thought about counseling, therapy? Um, when I came here, and I think, like, the weather had, like, gotten really chilly, and I was staying inside a lot, and I was talking to, like, my, um, academic advisor and he was like oh you think you're going through like seasonal depression or something and like I thought about it once and I was like nah you know I just want to be inside but like he was really pushing the idea because I told him I like was unmotivated to like go outside but like I was just saying I'm cold and he was saying uh there's something wrong so that's yeah. like the only time I really thought about it so you came you came here from France yeah to go to school yeah and from a Nigerian family in France you came here to go to school <laughs> and like somehow you're at how old were you 18 right now no when you came here oh no 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 um i was about what 13 ish okay all right yeah. i got you but somehow you're expected to just be okay like normal okay like i got this i mean yeah because like my parents like to say there's nothing like that i don't have that like i can't get you know or, like people back home don't have but I have it, so I should be fine. So that's your therapy, right? <laughs> your, therapy is to, your therapy is to, like, think about people back home. Yeah. And then, like, oh, I'm better off than there, so therefore I'm good, yeah. right? Maybe that's what happened in those, that three-day party binge that you were on, man. Just, yeah, okay. So the idea, so you're going to go back to the, so God thing is another big part of, which is a big part of Nigerian culture, man. yeah. Um, a lot of the times, it's just like if you're dealing with something, you need to go speak to God about it, you know, pray about it, and like, God will help you out. Um, Mohanad, how about you, man? So you're, you're born in Saudi. Yep. Dude, Saudi, you guys, you guys are all in therapy, aren't you, man? All of us, yeah. yeah Every the whole single country. one of us are getting better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's how you're... <laughs> T- tell me about it, man. How, how is it in the, in the Arab world? Um, so, like, I guess mental health in, like, the Western world was slow to, like, become a mainstream topic. And nowadays people, like, tweet about their therapy sessions, right? And, but think about how long it took Saudi Arabia to legalize women driving, right? And then apply that to mental health. Um, see so, on so a lot of people years. don't know. So, it like, so women started driving in Saudi Arabia like what three years ago? Right? 2016, 2018. I don't know. Yeah, like I think it was like 2018. So about four, maybe five years ago. Okay. Time Movie flies. When too. you get to my age, bro, time yeah. flies real fast. Okay, so go ahead. Yeah. Um. So yeah, if uh, if I were to like look up therapy over there in Saudi Arabia, I don't think I'd find many options. I think if I talked to some random person on the street over there, he'd tell me to go find God like uh, Angel brought up. And, you know, a lot of people over there, you know, they find solace in faith and all that. But um, not everyone, I guess, you know, I don't know. But, you know, like, okay, so let me ask a question to you all, right, for a second. So, you know, there are mental, we, there are mental health issues in which just chemically, and biologically, you know, we are society, right? Chemically and biologically, we experience some kind of imbalance, as many of you do, right? Some of you are struggling with a lot of depression. Some of you struggle with a lot of anxiety. Some of you struggle with, some of you are diagnosed as bipolar, 
or any, any, any number of issues, right? So a lot of people, right? That this is like a biochemical reaction to life. The body is a really complex thing. And so like you can't just assume it's gonna operate very evenly and smoothly and so on, right? So I gotta think that just about the same number of people in every culture are gonna have bodies that are off. So the same amount of bipolar disorder. I mean, people, we could, here in the US, we might diagnose more people with it, but I gotta assume that the same, that regardless, if I think about all of you, right, the same, regardless of your culture, we have the same number of people who are going to experience these kinds of, our bodies just being off. So, so that makes me wonder, huh, what happens to all those people? Like, where, where are they? Where are they in Saudi Arabia, man? Who takes care of them? Um, I actually disagree with what you just said. I think there is, might be a disproportionate amount of people in different cultures who suffer from mental illnesses. No, hang on, hang on. I'm not talking about mental illnesses, right? Okay. I'm not talking about, like, depression. Well, like, a lot, I'm talking about a, a mental, like, an, a, a level of illness that really emerges out of an imbalance of the, of the body, mind, spirit. You, you know what I mean? So like, a, like I can, there are a lot of people in this room who are thinking they might be depressed. It's, it's some level, right? Like, Ting Wei. Like you're saying like, yeah, I'm really tired and I can't get out of bed, right? Yeah. Okay, that's what you were really struggling with. But like, okay, but what is that, right? What, what is that? Um, I'm talking about like really more serious imbalances. So I think there clearly are different, some subtle differences in cultures, but I don't think that the bodies, the, like you know, your body and Angel's body and Sai's body and Brooke's body and so on, are, are, we're essentially the same human beings, we just have different cultures. What happens to people who are suffering really serious psychological debilitations? What happens to them in Saudi Arabia? Who takes care of them? They kind of get thrown out on the street, I'm not gonna lie. Seriously? Yeah. You, got, you have homelessness in Saudi Arabia? Sure, yeah, whatever you wanna call it. But like, people don't wanna deal with, I don't, I don't know what to tell you, but like, I guess I have some family members who are on that like, deep end of, you know, a chemical body imbalance or whatever, and just no one in my family wants to take care of them, you know, that's just a burden on them kind of thing, you know. But so like, family, but like in Saudi, in the Arab world, families are everything. Yeah, but, you know, I don't know, I don't know what to tell you, it's not beneficial for like, you know, the when, family themselves. When they go off, right, I got that. What happens in Korea to people who really can't who need to be taken care of and aren't taken care of? Um, I think like their families, most of the time their families take care of them. Mm -hmm. And when I walk in the street, I don't see a lot of like people with mental illness or like unstable mental health. Yeah. So I'm assuming that the family will take care of them. Mm -hmm. And I mean, those people are definitely there, but the families are trying their best to not like put themselves out there mm -hmm, in society. Mm -hmm, okay. They're, like trying to kind of hide themselves. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sai, do you have any? Th in, I mean, I, d in India, I mean, there, there's so many people on the streets, right? Yeah. And so, like, I, it's hard for me as an outsider. I mean, I've been to India, I don't know, like four times, right? But spent a fair amount of time there, but it's hard for me to assess what's actually going on. Um, I, would, I would probably say some of it is just because of poverty, like the people who are ho homeless, but um, in India, I think family is like, it's like really important. So even if like someone's like really mentally ill, they would put it on themselves to take care of them, but for those who don't have like family, a lot of people on the roads are like people with like schizophrenia or like really bad psychological disorder. Um, but I feel like there are a lot of organizations that actually help for these people. So there is help, mm 
Yeah. There's a lot of help, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. in India right now. But, yeah, I would say, like, it's, like, half-half. Like, some of it's because of actual poverty and some of it's, like... I feel like it's because of poverty they have mental illness because they don't have help. They don't have money to access help. And when you have a physical illness, you get medic... Sometimes you end up with a mental illness as well. So yeah. I think it's all just interconnected. Huh. Who do you talk to? Who's, like, the first person you talk to? Like, my friends, probably. Uh -huh. I think, like, for some people, it would be their family. I think I just, like, relate more to my friends and they understand me better at this point, like, at college and stuff. So I would say the first people I go to would be, like, my closest friends. So when you're, like, dealing with some emotional issue that it really is, like, you're wrestling with it, you go to, you go to them. Yeah. And how do you know whether to trust them? Um... I guess it's just kind of like a mutual, like, friendship t sort of deal. Like, sometimes when you just feel like maybe, like, you've been friends with them for a really long time and they've had your back before, like, you kind of know you can talk to them or they've talked to you about issues, like, that mutual, like, respect yeah. sort of deal. So, Mohana, who do people turn to in, like, in, in your world? In your, in, what do you see? Who do they turn to? Um, I got to say that, like, I didn't grow up being taught that if I'm in distress, I should turn to someone. So it's just a lot of internalizing and just stuffing it deep down. Because when you notice interactions, I guess when I was young and I noticed interactions, it wasn't, people didn't talk about the bad stuff. They talked about the good stuff kind of thing. And if there is something going bad in your life, deal with it. Just what's deal with it mean can you like what's that mean to you like what if someone said that to you like if angels said that to you dude deal with it man what would that mean shit happens you know like you're not you're not special get get through it you know god didn't choose you or whatever or i, I don't want to get religious or anything but yeah well because yeah i got you man. Yeah. yeah so just deal with it What's deal, dude, what's deal with it mean to the Chinese? Wait, wait, wait. <clears throat> deal with it? Like, yeah, because oh. that's what they'd say in China too, right? Deal, would they even say that? Do you guys even like, if you're struggling with something, do you even tell other people in your culture? Or well, do you just completely keep it inside? Back in China, you don't, you don't tell anyone. You don't tell anyone You don't tell anything? anyone, you just... You've just been, you know, people, people notice you've been acting weird and stuff, you know. Like, you've been moving a lot, and you've been, like, acting kind of weird. And you just, people just see you, like, as a weirdo. And they just don't, don't really look at you, I guess. My, my mom would be like, oh, that kid's weird. Don't play with him. And, yeah, that's probably, that's it. And you just kind of neglect everything. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, same, same in, in Korea? You're like... Yeah, like, I don't, I don't know about, like, all the other other families, but at least for mine, I was taught to, like, just, you know, be strong, suck it up. Yeah.